And joining us in the studio now for our Your Health segment is Dr. Craig Bennett, who is an assistant professor of orthopedics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and chief of sports medicine at the University of Maryland Medical Center and the Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. We've been talking about all the great summer weather. We've had a lot of people get the impulse to go out and do something. Right. And there's a lot of things we should we should bear in mind before we do that. One is when we're talking about 100 degree temperatures uh, is hydration. Right. Well, you know, we know it. And one of the things that you have to remember is hydration before the activity as well as after the activity. So there's a tendency to think about, well, I'm going to drink a lot of fluid after I'm done. Well, one of the things, if you're not going to go out and do an activity, get that fluid in you ahead of time. And then you think about what you're going to put into your system. There are some popular sports drinks such as Gatorade that a lot of people will tend to use tend to, for, for advertising and things of that nature. Well, you should remember that you know, water is kind of the staple. And if you are going to drink some of the, um, the Gatorade type drinks, at the very least, it should be a 50-50 mix between regular water and one of those types of really okay yes. so are we talking about watering down the gatorade or you absolutely. have a glass of water then a glass of gatorade and vice versa either one absolutely and it's important to remember before as well as after and and what's the argument for that the argument for the before F and after for watering it down well it's well, too concentrated it's too the, the, mo these flavored drinks have too high of a sugar content in general and too high of a salt content and so while you do lose some salt there's a tendency to take too much of the salt in when you're having those types of drinks. What kinds of injuries uh, show up? I imagine you get, you get busier in the, in the warmer months. You know, it's interesting. I get busier with certain activities relating to the injuries, such as overuse injuries. Um, there's no question that for a practice like mine, there's a seasonal component. There are certain injuries such as ACL tears, anterior cruciate ligament tears, and uh, shoulder dislocations that tend to occur during the peak of contact sports season, such as the beginning of football practice, or ACL injuries during ski season. But the overuse injuries, the strains and the sprains, those definitely have a higher incidence in the summer when people are more active. How do we, how do we avoid those? Well, one of the things is to be active all year round. There is a tendency, we talk about weekend war warriors, well, we're weekend warriors typically, but also summer warriors. And so when the weather gets nice and when the, sh you know, the shirts are getting a little smaller, the skirts are getting a little bit higher, then people are doing more and more. Well, in the winter, it's important to stretch and to work out and to maintain a certain level of activity so that when those summer months come, your body is ready for it. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question for Dr. Bennett on sports medicine, you can give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet at MPT News. Let's start with Tony in Baltimore City. Tony, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Um, my question is, um, is one of me a bone injury or is it a tissue injury? And can I keep exercising with one of me? Okay. okay, well, great question. So when you look at our model here, when runners have pain that begins with their increased activity level, the most, this is the, a knee model where this is the lower part, this is the upper part, and here at the front we have the patella or the kneecap. And so when you talk about runner's knee, for the most part it's pain in the front. And the front areas that tend to get painful first would be the tendon. You know, the, the patellar tendon connects the patella or kneecap down in the bone here. This can get very strained when you increase your activities, particularly new activities, running on a hard surface, running on an embanked surface, running downhill. So downhill running is tough on this tendon. Running on an embanked road is, is tough because the roads are embanked so that the water doesn't get stuck in the middle of the street. It'll right. flow out. Well, running on an uneven surface like that puts stress on one side of the knee more than the other, and that can give you a lot of pain in the front. Then you have the kneecap part, or the patella. That tends to give you tr trouble because you can wear down the cartilage under the kneecap. And so when we talk about runner's knee, those are the two typical things we're speaking of. And yes, great question. You can and you should continue to work out while you have that, but you should stay away from the running. The swimming, biking, light weight lifting, those are things that you should continue to do while you're trying to recover, keeping your muscles strong, keeping your muscles stretched. So uh, is that advice for, um, for all runners or um, 
I guess where I'm going is if somebody's starting into a program of, of running, uh, would you rather see them on the, the cushion track at the neighborhood high school wearing good shoes and a flat surface, or is that something you do when, when the knee starts acting up? No, absolutely beforehand. Before you begin to have the problem, you want to start with a preventive program, even an early running program. So you point a flat track or grass surface, and if you have to run where there's uneven terrain, it's absolutely better to run slightly uphill than downhill because when you run downhill, you have to slow the leg down and that puts more stress on the tissues. Right, let's uh, take a phone call. This is B in Baltimore City. B, thanks for the call, go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi. I have a uh, torn meniscus in the inside of my knee and um, I got a cortisone shot, but I'm not sure whether I can go ahead and work out. It made the pain go away but not the swelling. Should I wait and have the surgery or, or, or is it okay to go ahead and work out while, um, uh, uh, while the cortisone is working and I don't have pain? B, thanks for the phone call. Good luck with the knee. Okay, another great question. So let's talk about what the meniscus is first. The meniscus is a mattress pad, it's a cushion. So here's the leg bone or the tibia, thigh bone or the femur, the cushion on each side is the meniscus. So that meniscus tissue can rip and tear. It can rip and tear suddenly or it can go slowly. And so here I've taken the model down and I'm showing you the meniscus tissue right here. And so B, your question is a great one. And one of the things you mentioned is swelling. When you have new swelling, that's an indication that something's wrong and you should not do the activity that puts stress on that part of the body. So while you have that new swelling, you should not be running. You can do some other things like we mentioned earlier, cross training, things like biking or swimming. In regards to the cortisone injection, it's a masker. It can decrease the swelling and decrease the inflammation, but you should not go quickly back to a level of impact or stressful activity until your body can adjust to that and recover from that. And then the other piece of the question is how young are you? There's a vast difference in how we manage somebody who's 18 or 19 versus somebody who's, you know, in their 50s or 60s, and then you have that gray zone in the middle. And so our treatment for that meniscus tear is going to vary based on your age. You're, you guys are the team doctors for the, the Terps. So yes. speaking of a bunch of 18, 19, 20-year-old athletes, that must be a whole different ball game. You know, it's interesting. It's a different ball game in terms of the, some of the specifics that we treat them with. But you'd be surprised the number of similarities. I mean, the biggest difference is the time frame in that with most of us, while we don't necessarily want to rest, we can afford to rest. There are some jobs that are dependent upon our knee or our shoulder being able to do X, Y, or Z. But for the most part, we have the option of time. The biggest difference taking care of the Terps and with taking care of professional athletes or high-level athletes is that time. Yeah. They've got to get back. Well, take good care of him this year, if you would. Dr. Craig Bennett of the University of Maryland and everybody else, too. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for having me. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.